All right. So, do we have any questions? Anything that you want to go over? So, shall I just go over some the stoichiometry? Yeah. Several questions at the end of the test. It's very basic. It's not hard. You know, if you know your moles, you're going to be good. So let's take a pretty standard equation. What I'll do is I'll do one problem per three sections, so you'll have three problems to look at. So let's take ammonia, I'm oh, sorry, um, nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas yields ammonia gas, correct? And it's balanced like that. Okay? Yes? Yes? Okay. Synthesis. All right? What I do is, this is the way I do this stuff. It's just more straightforward. This is the Darcy method. The actual calculations that you'll actually use, if you do it the book's way, are the same as mine. It's just... I like my way because it explains a little bit more of the stoichiometry instead of some brain-dead factor label dimensional analysis thing. It actually looks at the chemistry involved, okay? This says one particle, three particles, two particles. That's how it reacts, correct? Make sense? Okay. If I have a dozen, three dozen, two dozen, or if I have a mole, three moles, two moles. Okay, remember a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, right? So you know what the you know what the gram molecular weight is of a mole of material. It's the same as the atomic mass, but you just called grams. So nitrogen is 14, so two 14s would be 28, right? So the atomic weight of nitrogen, a nitrogen gas molecule, the molecular weight is going to be what? 28 grams, right? One particle is 28 atomic mass units, right? And a mole would be 28 grams, yes? So I do this, I put 28 grams here, right? Yes? And then what are six, six hydrogens going to be? Hydrogen is one. You can do this, guys, my nonverbal class. You can do it. Salama? Well, you know what the atomic mass is of hydrogen, right? What is the atomic mass of hydrogen? I, I just told you. Were you listening or mind was wandering? Periodic table's right there. H, upper left hand corner. What's the atomic weight of hydrogen? One, yeah. So what would six ones be? Six. Right? Is that hard? So I just got lucky. He was just like going that. He, was, he thought I asked him, where's the ceiling? It was interpretive. So he was going like this, and that's right. One. Hydrogen is one. Very good. Okay? You should think. What's the answer? One. So you think, point to the ceiling. Okay? Excellent. So that's going to be six. So if I have 14 and 3 is 17, right? What's two 17s? Well, I was like, he, there he is. He's, he's like, I can see him thinking, man. I'll tell you, his brain, do you know that, that his brain in intimate circles is called a computer? It's like, I can see him going, man. I'll tell you. What, what is it? What's two, two 17s? What is it? You can do it. He's like looking up like this. He's, he's got it, man. I'm telling you, the guy's chugging. If you hear background noise, that's just his computer brain. Yes. What do you got, big guy? 34. That's right. Very good. So 34 <coughs> grams. So wouldn't if it's a balanced equation, wouldn't it be 34, 34, right? So let's say, let's say I don't have. Let's say I, have, I don't have 28, I have 6 grams of nitrogen, right? I have excess of this, I have plenty of this, 
How much of this am I going to make? Right? I have six grams of nitrogen. I just flood it. I have plenty of hydrogen. I have some left over. Plenty of excess. How much of this am I going to make? How, how do you do that? Well, if I have 28, I produce 34. If I have 14, I produce 30, I produce 17. If I have 7, I produce half of 17, right? So it'll be a little bit less than that, right? Because it's 6, right? Instead of 7. So what do you say? Constant ratios, yes, so it's going to be nitrogen over over, um, sorry, nitrogen over ammonia, two ammonia, right? And it's going to be 28 is to 34. 6 over x, right? Easy? It's just proportional relationships, right? Right? 28 is to 6 as 34 is to what? Is that hard? Isn't that just 7th grade math? Proportional relationships? Isn't this chemistry? Isn't that stoichiometry? The study of inherent constant ratios and proportions that are within a chemical balanced chemical equation, otherwise known as a stoichiometric equation? I mean, it's, it's all it is. I mean, stoichiometry, the word is far more complex than the concept. I mean, is that, isn't that easy? Right? Okay. So what is going to be, what's 34 times 6 divided by 28? 34 times, yeah, in other words, you need your calculator. We get like one person, God bless Angola. What do you got? What is it? 7.285. 7.3. 7 is that right? So 7.3 grams. Right? Now, so what what is this called? This is called the what? In chapter 12, what's that called? It's called the theoretical yield. The theoretical yield. That's what I should get. But what happens if I ended up with, I don't know, six grams? Is that possible? Sure. Through experimental error, systematic error, whatever. Dirty glassware. I ended up with this. Oh. What's the, you ready? What's the actual yield? What, what, what is the actual yield? What's the actual yield? This. It's called actual yield. Right? Make sense? Familiar to you guys at all or? Okay. Actual yield. Now, here you go. You ready? Is this coming out over here? Percent yield. What's the percent yield? How do you get that? What's well, going to be the actual divided by the theoretical times 100? So somebody do it for me. What's 6 divided by 7.3 times 100? What am I repeating? It's on the board. Act the actual yield is this. The theoretical yield is this. The percent yield is going to be this, right? So what is it? Come on, guys. 82%? Is that right? So 82%. So the, so the percent yield equals 81% by weight, by mass. Yes? Yes? Now let's look at it, and then we're going to quit.
one more thing, and we're going to quit. Okay? All right. What's what's the limiting reagent here? In other words, what does that? Well, first of all, what does that mean, right? In other words, whatever I put here, what's it limited by? In other words, let's say, let's say that I put in fifty. You know what? I need to do one of these. That's pretty good. Um, let's say I put in fifty. I put in fifty grams of this. Whoa, that's pretty good. 50 grams of this and 50 grams of this, right? Given that experiment, what's the limiting reagent? These are the reagents, right? Reagent, reactant, same thing. Limiting reagent, the reagent, right? Limiting reactant, same thing. These are the products, yes? What's, what's limiting? In other words, which one am I going to use all of it? And which one's going to be excess? Whatever's excess, the other one's limiting, right? In other words, well, let's, you want to test it the old-fashioned way? We'll try to get lucky. Yes? Yes? Just all, all you have to do is test one, and you, and you can see. Yes? We'll test both, but all you need is to test one. So let's say this is what we're going to do, right? So let's say I use, let's say I use all of 50. How much of this am I going to need? If I need more of this, then that's limiting. If we're going to have some of this left over, then that's excess. Yes? So in other words, let's compare this with this. So it's going to be N2 over 2 NH3, 28 over 34 equals 50 over... What? Right? So what's 34 times 50 divided by 28? What is it? I can't hear you. 60.7. Right? Okay. That's how much I'm going to get if I use that. Right? But does that tell me which one's limiting? Does that tell me which one's limiting? Does it? No. In other words, I have to calculate. If I use all 50 of this, how much of this am I going to get? Yes? If I use 50 of this, if I use all of this, how much, gonna, how, much, how much am I going to need of this? Not get. I'm sorry. How much am I going to need of this? In other words, if I say to you, if I need 50 of this, how much of this am I going to need? What's the combination? Well, we know it's 28 to 6, right? Right? So it would be 28 to 6 equals what? 50 over x, right? Yes? So what's x? Do it. 6 times 50 divided by 28. What do you got? What was this? This was 60.7? Is that what that was? Yes? So can we just say 61? Is that alright? So what, what's, what's x? 10.7. 10.7, right? Yes? Yes? 10.7. So, which one's going to be limiting and which one's going to be in excess? Do you know yet? Well, obviously, if I use all of this, aren't I going to have this left over? Yes or no? Therefore, that's in excess. Right? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So, if that's excess, that must be what? Limiting, right? What does that mean, limiting? In other words, in other words, this. Let's say I use. Let's say I use all of this. How much would I need of that? All right. Well, here we go. 
N2 over 3H2 yields 28 over 6. I want to use all of this, right? So I want to know how much that there is, right? Right? Yeah. So it's 28 times 50 divided by 6. Go on. What is it? 233.3. So 233. All right. So 233. So do you see what it's saying here? If I use all of this, I only need 10 grams of this, right? Yes? But if I use 50 of this, I need 233 of this. Do I have enough of that? Do I? No. Yes or no? No, I don't. So, so what is the most material I can produce? 61, right? Because I have plenty of that. I'm sorry, I have that, but I have, that's in excess. I don't have enough of this to consume all of that. You see? If I was going to consume all of that, I would need 233 of this. 233, 50 of this, and then I could produce more. Correct? I could produce more. So, how much of this do I need if I'm going to produce all of this? How much do I need? Rounded to what? 11, right? Because 50 plus 11 is 61, right? You see how that works? So, how much are we going to have left over? What is going to be the mass in excess? What's going to be the mass in excess? 39 grams, right? Yes or no? Yes. Go to lunch. <laughs>